Bullshit. Welcome to the No BS Marketing Show. In this episode, Dave calls in from sunny California to give an update on his business trip and provide some helpful advice for those who travel often for work to maximize their time when away from the office. Okay, so Dave, you're out in California. So how's the weather out there? Good? It's interesting because it was uh, 97 degrees at dinner outside last night with a client and we were saying how hot it was and they were saying that it's more comfortable than Pittsburgh at 75 because there's no humidity here, but it was still tough for me at 97 degrees to eat dinner at seven o'clock at night. <laughs> oh, God. That doesn't sound like too favorable of conditions there. <laughs> but, it's, uh, it's, sunny? It's, it's actually sunny, uh, clear skies. And when we went to the beach, it was a lot cooler at the beach. It was a good seven to 10 degrees cooler at the beach. So we went to the beach, uh, Sunday just to relax before that client meeting. And then uh, the client meeting went fantastic. So all in all, it's beautiful. Uh, You know, it's always beautiful, sunny and clear. So so I'm not complaining. No, living up to its name of the sunshine state. So that's good. All right. So you're there kind of, you kind of did like a double duty. There's a little bit of the personal aspect of this trip where, you know, you're taking some time for yourself, a little mini vacation and then the business side of things. Yes, tr- always try to squeeze in some time when I'm here. And I brought Carter along uh, so he could enjoy it too. We did uh, have a client discussion with two different clients already. And then we have all day with clients today and tomorrow. So it's exciting. That's awesome. So on the client side of things, you know, with who you're working with, what are you, what's the exact goals and, you know, what are you trying to improve on their marketing efforts, you know, with kind of like the mass solutions touch, I guess you could say. We have multiple clients that we're working with, but one in particular, and it's a common thing that we've run into is when you get a medium-sized company that really does things well and has some clear competitive advantages, and is doing well. They're, they're achieving growth and they have good top and bottom line performance, but they know that they have some competitive advantages and that they could be doing much more from a growth standpoint and they need to tell their story. So what we began doing was first had a strategy session with the principals where we walked through and we had already researched the company, had a number of discussions with them before the start of the engagement. So we've done a lot of online research, trend research, multiple discussions, probably about a half dozen discussions with the key leaders. And now what we're doing is mapping out all of these areas where we see them having four or five really clear competitive advantages. And we're going to try to confirm that today because we're going to sit in on some customer service calls. We are going to begin contacting some key clients and even try to meet with a couple of key clients while we're here. We're going to take a tour of their production facility because that helps us to get an understanding of how to tell that story from a key competitive advantage standpoint and also just to tell the story from a company's history and culture. And then we're going to have meetings with the entire management team, production leaders, and even line employees. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go on a couple of actual client calls so I can see and hear what those clients say. And then others on our team are going to be making a number of calls to existing clients, satisfied clients, raving fans, and referral sources. And that will all be taking place as part of our Understanding Your Customer Opportunity Program with the ultimate goal to be able to reformulate and provide them with a big idea, big idea that takes the answer to those two why questions, their why, their reason for being, which we've learned a lot about during these six or seven discussions. And then that customer's why, which we're learning about this week and ongoing through these interviews and observations and looking at reports and come back with that big idea. Then underneath that big idea, we're going to have messaging pillars. And they have these four or five clear competitive advantages that they've talked to us about and they're showing us data to support that because that's the other thing with any client we challenge what they see as their competitive advantage and then we go out and talk about that with current and past clients and with employees and with others and we see how much it matches up is it as clear of a competitive advantage or maybe it's more of a competitive advantage than they realize well we see already there's four or five that we want to research if those four or five end up being as clear as we think they will be 
we'll build messaging pillars around those five that roll up under the big idea. And then that begins the storytelling process. Gotcha. So that seems like a very um, immersive experience for both, you know, the mass solutions team and also for the company that you're working with, because you're kind of blending into their daily operations to kind of get that firsthand look at, you know, what's going on on their side of the spectrum rather than asking them, you're kind of seeing it for yourself. Yes. And we have a pretty intense combination of the art and science and, Many firms in the space, whether they're an ad agency or a digital marketing boutique or a PR firm, many of them will will do some of this. They might do a tour. They'll do some discussions and so forth. But we go really in-depth and we spend a lot of time observing, talking to people, challenging assumptions, challenging comments and praise and, and challenging the competitive advantages. And then we spend a great deal of time talking to actual customers, referral sources, raving fans, possibly disgruntled customers, talking to people that have never been customers. We do that with any client as part of this understanding your customer opportunity. And just by listening to this, if you're a person out there that's just hearing about this for the first time, as you can tell as I talk, you see that this is truly combining the art and science and formulating that big idea from both an art and science and supporting messaging pillars as well. And anytime we're doing this, the beauty is that during the, this process, the understand your customer opportunity process, we find marketing and operational solutions. We can't tell you what they're going to be because we won't know until after we've done the tour and after we've talked to line staff and after we've talked to production managers and after we've talked to middle management and senior management, after we've talked to pleased customers, people that don't know anything about you, customers that are maybe on the fence, referral sources, we will inevitably come up with ideas to improve the company. And they can be things from the customer experience, the call center, the way you're tracking data, the way you're capturing data, all of those things come back as part of our marketing solutions. And that's why it's called understanding your customer opportunity, because Yes, you want to understand your customer, but you also want to understand the opportunity. So there's two different things going on there, and it becomes an in-depth way that it's not just creative. It's not just coming up with a message, and it's not just saying we're going to shoot some video. Those might be a part of it, but it's having an art and science around that that drives that. But there's also these marketing solutions that we've come up with for client after client after client based on what we learn and based on the fact that we are business people who understand marketing and understand the customer experience. Gotcha. So that all makes sense. And, you know, I know today is a busy day, so I'm not going to hold you on here too much longer, but I wanted you to maybe give us, since you travel a lot throughout the year, if you have any tips for your listeners, if they travel as well, to kind of maximize their time when traveling for business, you know, like what is something that you do on every business trip that kind of helps you still be able to get your daily to-do list done and, you know, kind of manage what you're doing whenever you're on the road? Well, the first tip I'm going to give, I I hesitate to give because at some point people are going to get smart about it and then my competitive advantage will go away. But I'm just amazed that more people don't do TSA pre-check. It enables me to get in and out so quickly. I don't have to uh, take off shoes and belts and worry about what's in the bags and so forth. So the TSA pre-check is part of it. I always build an, a quick plan. I'm talking 15 minutes where I go back and, and say like, yeah, what I did was I built like a packing list like three years ago when I was starting this major tour across the country talking about no BS marketing. And so I go back to that and just make sure I have all the technology stuff. I have, multi, I have a, a big battery brick charger thing that can help you on the plane. I have multiple cords for any conceivable way with a lightning cable, Google, Android cable, all of that stuff, because you have to be able to fight technology. And I'm jinxed on technology, which you and I always laugh about, but <laughs> I try to make sure I try to make sure I avoid any potential jinxing of technology because I think that helps you. And I try to get to some level of normalcy. Like even out here, I've just been staying on East Coast time, which means right. like I'm getting up at like four thirty, five o'clock here. But that enables me when I come back to uh, not be as far off. And then I just think that you have to carve out time, which I wasn't good at initially. And even now with our clients, we say to them, when we come here for a week for one or two clients, that doesn't mean that 
we're billing you for 40 hours, nor does it mean we're going to be working on you for 40 hours. You have to be fair to both parties because then me and in this particular trip, it's Bonita, the two of us can actually debrief after a meeting and which is important, debrief at the end of each day about what was worked on at the two clients, but then also have certain times during the day to recharge for a half hour, make sure you have time to check emails, make sure you have time to check in with like you and Mike Gaddy, we've already talked today. Those are the tips I would give people so you maintain some normalcy when you're on the road. So the first is on the beginning is use that TSA pre-check and plan with the packing list and have all the technology cables. The second is be honest with your clients to tell them you need time to decompress, you need time to debrief, and you're not going to be working just on client stuff. And if you're able to do that, I think it brings you some sense of normalcy. Absolutely. I think those are good tips. Absolutely. You know, for traveling and kind of like you're saying, keeping that sense of normalcy, even whenever you're not at the home base in the home office. So, Dave, I know you're busy and I know you have a, you know, crazy day ahead. So, you know, good luck at the meetings. Enjoy sunny California. and We'll see you back in Pittsburgh. We'll do. Thanks, Maria. Talk to you when we get back. This marks the end of another episode of the No BS Marketing Show. Remember to ask yourself, what's the big idea and build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.